Welcome. My name is Jose Posada. I'm a senior clinical data scientist working for the Stanford Center for Biomedical Informatics Research and Research IT at Stanford Healthcare. Today, I'm going to be with you in tutorial four, part four of the Stanford Medicine Tools for Healthcare Data Science. Today, we're going to cover the identification of clinical nodes in STAR OMOP. Let's get started. First, the question is, why do we need to de-identify clinical nodes or de-identify the data? We need to do this because we need to protect patient privacy. Patient has entrusted us their information while we take care of them in our facilities. And we need to ensure that patient privacy is protected. How do we ensure that that happens? First, we follow those two guidelines, the NIST guidelines and the HIPAA privacy rule. And with those two guidelines, we decided to take the safe harbor method that tell us that we should remove 18 identifiers. Among those identifiers, we have names, social securities, phone numbers, web pages, email addresses, patient location, among others, that could uniquely identify a patient if linked with any of the information in their health records. To fulfill this requirement, we implemented the following operations to, on, on the data we have. First, sometimes we just simply remove the information. Other times, we just substitute identifier that is numeric with just another random identifier that have no link between them. The other is when the identifier is a medium risk identifier and then that number that usually does not uniquely identify a patient can be just shifted by a, by a certain amount. Then for internal Stanford research, we jitter the dates. We shift those dates a certain amount so we preserve the patient timeline. We also can truncate the information. If it's a date, we truncate by just keeping the year or the month or the date. Also, sometimes we do masking. For example, in a clinical text, one of the traditional approach is instead of appearing the patient name, you have brackets name and you are masking the information but you sort of retain some semantics about what it is. However, another approach that we actually prefer is the general replacement, where, for example, for phone numbers or emails of, of web addresses, we substitute with a credible replacement, but it's just simply generic. For example, the phone number 555-555-555, or uh, if an SSN is found, we just substitute with 999, just a pattern that is just full of nine, but it looks like an SSN, but it's just the same for every SSN that we find. Or we use a strategy that we use for patient location and names that is a surrogate. With this surrogate strategy, we are actually increasing the risk of, of, of privacy or information leaking because we are substituting information with credible surrogates, thus making it harder to identify what is the real information. Details of this method that is called hidden in plain sight will come in a few slides. A single approach is typically insufficient, and that is why our text identification pipeline type combines machine learning to identify name entities and locations, combine hidden in plain sight that is a surrogate replacement strategy. And in this case, we are striving for sensitivity. How this type pipeline works? First, we have the node table in the AMOP CDM. This a node table to start is a fully identified node. Then we have a list of known PHI. This is the PHI the usual PHI that is collected at the time of admission, your address, your name, your social security number, all that information. We have that information there. We combine that with a clinical note. 
And then what we try to do is to first match the information that we have and try to find that information in the clinical note. That is the regex for known PHR. Then we also use regex to find common HIP identifiers that are easily findable by using this set of patterns, like an email of a web address. Also, we extensively use regex for dates that are also one of the common patterns that we can find there. And we use a name entity recognition to find patient locations and to find patient names. Then when we determine that this is a location, this particular token is a location or, or is a patient name, we replace that with a surrogate that is a credible address or a credible names that is sex aware on the clinical text. Or if it's another identifier that is not a date, we use a generic replacement. We do not use masking. And then for dates, we jitter those dates that is just shifting those dates uh, a fixed integer amount. Then we obtain a fully de-identified Home Obsidian note table that is readily accessible to you as a, in, a, in the same BigQuery dataset. So how this output looks like? The output is important to show it here. This is a completely fake record. And it is important to see why replacing with surrogates actually increase privacy. Here in red, we have patient health information and we have some associated patient information in orange, like the name of the doctor. And then if we only do masking, look what happens. For example, we mask the patient full name, last name, or other names we found. But because no single pipeline is perfect, it may happen that you have some leaked PHI. In this example, the leaked PHI is marked in red. Also, one important aspect is that sometimes you see here that the combination of the methods, for example, the NER found part of the information and the lookup found another part of the information and the regex found the other part of the information. That is the reason we have an ensemble of methods to be able to have a wider coverage. But what do we do? Here is very easy to distinguish the information that leaked through. But what happened that instead of using that masking, we use surrogates. Then the information that is leaked looks like any of the other information that is there. It's very difficult to assess that Madison is actually a leak name. It just looks like all the other fake names and the date just looks like the other dates that are there. Where do we get those names? We are using public databases, which is the Bayer census with addresses, we use the Health Resources Services Administration database. And all those databases, we collect them, we curate those databases to produce a nice curated surrogate database for names and location. How did we evaluate this? We review only for false negative. We review whether we were leaking any information. We pick a random of a thousand nodes and we pick also um, for short text, we picked like 80,000 rows and we went through all of them and manually reviewed them and checked whether some information were, was leaking. And this covers our tutorial four, part four, when we saw why do we need to de-identify text and how the text identification pipeline actually works. See you in the next tutorial. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.